Hey guys, Dr. Mike Israel here for Renaissance Periodization and Juggernaut Training Systems. I'm going to talk to you about an all too common myth, trying to lose all of your body weight goal at once. So a lot of us have found ourselves in a situation where we're maybe 30, 40, 50 or more pounds overweight for either where we'd like to be aesthetically, appearance wise, or for where our health needs to be at its best. Some of us well, are very hard working, we have a lot of willpower, and we say, okay, well, we're gonna do what it takes to make sure that we lose all this weight. We get a plan together, and we try to hard nose it and drive all the way through. And we say, okay, well, we have to lose 50 pounds, let's do it all at once. I'm gonna get this done, I'm gonna get there, biggest loser style, get rid of all the weight over a couple of months, I'm not gonna drag this process out, I have a ton of willpower, I can do it, and it's gonna be all good after that. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way, that approach runs into some serious problems. First of all, in one stretch of a lot of attempted weight loss, as that weight loss continues, either at too fast of a pace or too much total weight loss, we run into some predictable problems, some of which are the following. Your metabolism starts to slow. So the amount of deficit that you have to create, the smaller and smaller amounts of food that you have to eat becomes smaller and smaller and more miserable as your metabolism slows to try to prevent you from starving to death. Second point, your cravings for various junk foods or foods, just more foods, start to go through the roof. A lot of people have some really good willpower, but even some of the most high willpower individuals will eventually break to cravings. And even if they don't break, it just makes you really super miserable to have to crave all this food and not be able to eat it. The longer you diet for, if you're dieting for way too long to try to lose all this weight at once instead of splitting it up, or if you're trying to do it really, really fast, your cravings are gonna start to go insane. Another problem, is lower activity levels, what's called NEAT, all right? Uh, Non-exercise activity thermogenesis. It's just your regular movement patterns. For example, if I was dieted down right now, I might be giving this lecture like this, and very, very calm, almost no movements whatsoever. I'd be leaning on things. Since I'm not dieted down, I can move around a bit more, and for everyone else, this applies as well, for general conversations. What you're picking to do as far as activities. Do you tonight want to watch a movie on your couch just like this because you're super, super tired and maybe you've been dieting for too long? Or do you want to get up and go walk your dog in the park or have fun with friends? When you're dieted down to the bone, when you're going way too fast, when you're losing way too much weight at one time, your activity levels, just your involuntary amount of movement that you do, starts to really slide down, which makes creating a deficit even harder in combination with your slow metabolism. So what ends up happening is, toward the tail end of that one big shot to lose weight, you're eating very tiny amounts of food and losing very little weight because your body is trying to compensate for it in various ways, and your hunger cravings are going crazy. These th things right here are why most people fail at trying to lose a bunch of weight all at the same time, or as soon as they're done and they successfully lose the weight, there's this huge driver to bring you back up. Your hunger's crazy, you're not very active, your metabolism's slow, that's the perfect recipe to regain your weight once your diet is over. And in fact, almost everyone who tries to lose a lot of weight fast at once ends up regaining their weight, which is not great. We don't lose weight just to regain it. We want to lose it and keep it off for good. General rule to try to prevent this. It's probably not a good idea for most folks to lose any faster than 1% of their body weight per week. So if you weigh 200 pounds and you want to get down to 150, losing around two pounds of body weight per week is probably about the fastest you ever want to go. If you're losing three or four pounds regularly, you're probably going to crush your metabolism, send your cravings to the roof, and all that other bad stuff. Also, in one stretch of weight loss, before you take a break, 10% of your body weight's probably as far as you wanna go. So if you're starting out at 300 pounds, you say, I gotta be 200 for my health. You're totally right. But your first goal should only be about 270 pounds before you take your diet break. That's 30 pounds, that's 10% of your weight. That's a lot. But of course, there's that idea that, well, geez, 270 is still heavy and it's still really over fat. That's totally true, but we've gotta take our time if we wanna do things right. Good news is, we have this idea of settling points, starting to get some really good evidence for it in the scientific literature. If you maintain your weight for months at a new weight that you've reached, let's say you started from 300, over a couple of months you got to 270 pounds. If you maintain 270 for several months on end, all of these drivers back up really start to calm down. And most of them become either non-existent or unnoticeable, so there is no more fight to go back up. 
So if you've gone down to 270 and you just start living normal life again and not paying attention to your weight, you're almost certainly gonna balloon back up. But if you've gone down to 270, 300, and you make it a point to control your diet, to get proper exercise, to stay at 270 for several months, it starts out re being a really big effort, but then your metabolism picks up after a while. After a couple of months, your cravings start to go down and your activity levels start to come back up. So after several months, it's really easy for you to maintain 270. It's not a big deal. Now maybe you're ready to diet in another stretch, go hypocaloric, lose more weight to get yourself down and create another settling point where your body feels natural with its new lower weight and doesn't try to keep driving you back up as much as possible. Long-term weight loss, for that reason, probably a good idea to do two to three months of weight loss at less than 1% or so per week. And then for one to three months, hold that new weight, let your body readjust, and then repeat the process with another diet if you have more weight to lose. Does that mean that you're gonna be losing weight slower over time? Totally, but good news is there's no rush. And at the end of that process, you have a much higher chance of maintaining a new healthy weight rather than simply ballooning back up. If you really struggle with your diet, if you really struggle with body weight, if you're one of those people that usually regains a lot of their lost weight, you can modify this, maybe do one or two months of loss and three to four months of maintenance. Does that sound like a real snail's pace? Yes. Is a snail's pace better than no pace at all or stupid yo-yo diets that get you back to where you were? You bet. There's no rush. Remember, what really matters Point number five is healthy weight maintenance, getting to a healthy weight after months or years of intelligent struggle, but nonetheless intelligent, that lets you get your weight and keep it there. If you think, why, well, I'm 50 pounds overweight, I gotta lose all this weight by Christmas. Why? What magical thing is happening during Christmas? Especially if you know that you're setting yourself up for a big rebound. Don't rush, the long term is what matters the most by making sure to take maintenance phases, allowing those settling points to reset and occur, we give ourselves the best chance for long-term, true, healthy, sustainable weight loss. Thanks so much for tuning in. Dr. Mike Ezertel here for Renaissance Periodization and Juggernaut Training Systems.